If you're trying to build a strong brand and maintain a great relationship with your fans, there's something that you should absolutely never do. B. Simone, a rapper slash entertainer, comedian, actually made this mistake and we're going to talk about it. And then after that, we're going to talk about a 100K budget and what you should do with that or what's better than a 100K budget with that in today's era. You just got to stay tuned for that one, though. I'm Brand Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And this is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary. The headline reads, comedian and entertainer B. Simone reveals that she makes over $600,000 a year. Oh, oh, sheesh. And we're about to talk about how she does it. She revealed, like, really broke it down. But And then we got to talk about how it relates to the artist that are building their brands. Because it's a really, really, really important point that no artist should miss. 5,000 close friends that pay $10 a month. Mm-hmm. It's 50,000. You're doing non-traditional. Yeah. Because Instagram does have subscriptions. Mm -hmm. So break down the the close friends situation. So honestly, I started close friends because I didn't want to be on blogs. Me and my team, we started close friends and it's a product on my website. It first started as entertainment. Like I'm trying. All right. So what did she do wrong in this clip? In this clip, she made a huge faux pas and that was reveal how much she made. I know a lot of artists say they don't want to talk about how much money they make. And I know a lot of people want to talk about how much money they make as well. It's people on both sides. Why is it a bad thing? It's not something that we think is bad. We say we want artists to come on and talk about how much money they make. We ask people to do it in an interview. Some won't do it. Like, But that's not the issue. This is how it relates to you. It's an issue with her audience. Mm-hmm. right? And this is something that you have to think. When you scroll through this post on social media, there's literally people that are saying stuff like um yep ten dollars per month to watch someone else live their life is crazy so you're putting this on the open forum Mm -hmm. and then you have people that are actually following her saying that she's gonna they're gonna unfollow her all right they were paying ten dollars but now they're hating because they're like oh wait now you out here bragging she wasn't bragging this is an educational platform that's Mm -hmm. supposed to help other people come out with business models and do things for themselves see a better way she was not bragging however the people who are a part of the platform feel like oh she thinks she's better than us Mm -hmm. she's she's bragging about this and now she's losing um subscribers that were paying her ten dollars because of it now how many we don't know for sure but just from a small pr blip she did have that negative response. And then you have the other side of it when I said there's not somebody who's paying for it, but they're basically kind of making fun of it. Mm-hmm. And then you got those insecure users mm-hmm. who are your subscribers looking at other people judge them. And then they don't want any people body to know that they were a part of it. And then they're going to look, get rid of their profile or say extra quiet about it as well. So for your audi- for some audiences, again, like shit like this could work. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a rapper. I'm bragging about how much money I have. Mm -hmm. Know your audience more than anything. There's nothing wrong with doing this if it makes sense for your audience. But whatever you brand yourself, don't brag on something that's bad for your brand. And then don't hide the stuff that's good for your brand and be so insecure about shit that could be helpful based on, again, your demographic. That's my point. Yeah, I think I think some of it, too, has to come. Uh, has to deal with how she came up. And it still applies to artists, right? Like a lot of B. Simone's early branding was very like, like girl next door-ish, right? Yeah. Like, like I'm your friend, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm talking to my audience like like you're my friends, like you sis, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna treat y'all like that. And so sometimes the issue I see with that brand narrative is that the audience starts to kind of see you as like, not regular, but like just like them. Yeah, you know one of them. Yeah, one of them, right? Yep. And so the moment you reveal something that reminds them, or maybe not reminds them, but like, you know. Informs uh, them. Informs them, exactly. That <laughs> I'm you not are, you. Yeah, that you, <laughs> I'm not you. I'm in a much better, I am possibly in a much better position than you are. And yeah, that's going to be a part of your audience that's like, oh, she made 600K. She don't need my $10, you know what I'm saying? I'm out, you know what I'm saying? Or like you said, like, oh, man, like, now that I think about it, all these people are saying it's stupid. Like, it is stupid for me to be paying to see this celebrity when, like, the reason they probably got into it in the first place was, like, they were still attracted to that part of her brand that, felt like talking to a friend is they mm-hmm. wanted to see what their friend was doing. You yep. know what I'm saying? And they can so support like, you and all that type of stuff. Yeah. So I do think that's like one of the dark sides of artists and content creators being so accessible on social media is mm-hmm. that you are you, it, 
it's harder for you to put yourself on the pedestal than it's been for other artists in other in other decades. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Exactly. Because now it's like, bro, I see you every day. Like I just watched your story yesterday with you landing your apartment, you know what I'm saying, your bunny, and you was on the queen size, bro. I got a queen size. You ain't living better than me. You know what I'm saying? Like, so how can you convince me of that? And then when I, you know, do something that does convince you of that, then it's also a problem, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's to me, like the frequency of visibility isn't as much of an issue as again what you're f- frequently showing me mm-hmm. right like you nobody was dominating the internet and being shown to the audiences as much as gary v but at no point did most people feel like dang i'm on this dude's level yeah, right? that's true, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but what he was showing yeah. you know what i mean yeah that's a good point because it makes me think too is like you know like b simone isn't really like a like a super flashy person mm-hmm. not for what i've seen like i mean you know she's an entertainer so she's gonna she's gonna go to the yeah, the nine she's she a woman. To. She gonna dress cute and all yeah. that stuff, but yeah, yeah, she's but she's not. she's not like she's not like extremely opulent. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And so I can see that. Like people been, I can see people being like, "Damn, like I knew you was up," but and mm-hmm. she said just from this, so this don't include. That's what I was thinking. Yep. <laughs> this don't include <laughs> what her wild and out deal, her book deals, like mm-hmm. all the other stuff. But so the, the educated fan is gonna start, you know, putting some math together. I'm like, damn, she makes six hundred k just from this. You know what I'm saying? She probably making at least this a year. Yeah, you don't need my $10. Oh, I won't say a fan, but like that weird middle ground of like that person that like is one tip away from being fan or hater. It could really go either way. Bro, no. <laughs> Fans too. I always tell people about a homie of mine that's still a great homie and loves Beyonce, always has loved Beyonce. And I never forget being in college when I asked about what well, she going to buy this Beyonce project. And she was like, nah, she got enough money. Like, she don't need my money. <laughs> that was her answer. And she said it with a straight face. And it wasn't any bit of hate. She loved her to to death still to this day. <laughs> but it was just like, what do you need my support for? Like, if you were down bad, I might show up for you. Mm-hmm. You know, if people go off on you on the internet, I'm going to show up for you in that way. Right? And be like, oh, no, nah, y'all ain't going to talk about Queen B. But... Money? Yeah, money. Nah, she don't <laughs> need that. She's good over there. It's a, And it's a yeah. legitimate belief in the mind. So, <laughs> so... You really have to be cognizant to about, about what you show your fans and the impact of showing your fans that, particularly if you're in a position where it will have a big impact on you because mm-hmm. her doing that with Beyonce, yeah, legitimately doesn't impact Beyonce. Mm-hmm. So it's like, ah, fair enough. I'm like, I think that's some kind of that's kind of weird that you think in that way, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, it actually doesn't impact her. It's like you're so, not so wrong, to speak. You know what I'm yeah, yeah, so to speak, you know, but. B. Simone, I'm not saying that she's not doing decently for herself, but I'm sure this 600K a year, uh, if she, let's just say, it got wiped out, has a significant impact on her life. She you know what I'm saying? That. That, was a, that, was, that was money that had to go to work. That yeah. wasn't, that's, that's not money that was, just, that was just been extra sitting and I'll never touch it in my life yeah. type money, you yeah. know? So, what are other categories and things like that? Because I think some people might not fully understand like how this ties together. It's just because there's other things other than money. There's people in relationships, for example, right? Sierra, when she came out with the independent song, whoa, what do you mean independent? Shawty, you've been in a relationship for a long time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, Or I, I never really believed in this, but I saw somebody comment about this where like back in the day, they wouldn't want you to reveal that you're in a relationship so because it, the audience wouldn't yearn for you as much. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't look at you as much of a sex symbol. And I was like, okay, well, maybe that's true for, for uh, you know, Damn. women. Or no, I was, I was just thinking like women or oh, whatever. Right. But I'm like, I, you know, because I just know me as a man. That's not really going to change <laughs> much. Especially it's, it's like this isn't an accessible relationship anyway. It's not, yeah. I'm not going to be like this person's less cute. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. But recently, probably within the last week, I saw in the comment section, um, a guy basically said something like that. I don't know if it was like Holly and um, DDG or it was it was it was some relationship though. And I just happened to see in the comments that the guy basically said the girl was like less attractive or it was a turnoff or he didn't want to see the content as much because she was in a relationship. You know, I was just like, man, that really impacts her brand with some people. Now, some things you might say, I want to, I don't want any more of those people anyway. Mm-hmm. That's a specific decision that you can make. But there's there's a lot of examples in terms of just like little things that you can show or not show. Um, like especially when the block is hot, you might not be able to be seen with a certain individual in public. It's like, hey, bro, I'm gonna need you to figure out your PR situation or a job, bro. Yeah. Remember when Tierra Whack 
made that post about her going to work and the internet lit up. I mean, it worked out well for her, you yeah. know what I'm saying, thankfully, but mm -hmm. it's a lot of rappers, that would have been the end. See, and, that's, <laughs> and that goes back to brand. For her, yeah. showing that she had a regular job actually boosted her brand, mm -hmm. but for another rapper It'd that would have been like Lil Baby everything. or something, over with. <laughs> everything would have been over. And that goes, the, the, the lesson is not, you should never reveal how much money you should make. The lesson is you should never reveal something that negatively impacts your brand without understanding what actually your brand is. Mm -hmm. right, you have to understand, I mean, do they like me for this? Do they like me for that? What story have they bought into me Bought into me for? And that's hard to know sometimes because you think someone's buying into that vision in your head that you're putting out. Mm -hmm. And this is where it comes important to actually pay attention to fans. People will mess with you for reasons that you're not even trying. Yep. You know, they yep. just see something naturally, and in your head, you're like, yeah, they they rock with me. The music. Cause, yeah, because like, you know. it's the music. And it's like, nah, <laughs> I just think you look good, or or I think you funny, or mm -hmm. I don't think you're musically talented, but I like your song somehow in a way or something. You know, it, it could be some, <laughs> yeah. there's so many different reasons, or you remind me of something, you know, and I, re I relate, or whatever. Or, hey, I do like you for that style of music, but whoa, I don't See you as an artist, artist. What you doing, like way over there? Yeah. Like I, I'll let Donald Glover or Kanye do that, or Andre 3000 do that. But you, nah, bro. I need you in this box. Need you back in the trap. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get back. Exactly. Get back in the trap. I need to see the kitchen with the light that's barely on. You know what I mean? Like that. That's the reality. Now you can once you realize that reality, because I know some people who like, well, a lot of artists get turned off by that idea of that kind of box. It doesn't mean you can never do that stuff, but being cognizant of it helps you move accordingly mm -hmm. and not get surprised, you know what I mean? Come outside and everything's on fire and then also build a strategy. Well, how do I make that connection? You know what I mean? How do I do it? You're speaking of more of a trap style, um, Lil Dirt, right? Okay. His journey has created more flexibility in things that he could do yeah. versus where he started. Yeah, exactly, right? yeah. So you can op you can um, lengthen your box, create more space in your box over time where your box goes from a block to a whole city, to a city, to a state, you know? But you gotta go through that process. Yeah, that's a good point to make too. Like time can also change the impact of it. Cause if we go back to the B. Simone uh, situation, like let's say this was like 20 years from now and she's now B. Simone, the entertainment mogul, you know what I'm saying? Like with a big, media company, yes. you know what I'm saying, doing whatever. And she had came out and said this, it wouldn't have been the same reaction because we would have already assumed, you know what I'm saying, she was already killing it like that. It's but, fueling her brand. Exactly. It's like when Jay-Z does another deal, it's like, ah, yep. that makes him more Jay-Z. Exactly, yep, exactly. Yep. So yeah, I, I agree that time does play a big part in it. Let me take a quick second to say, if you're looking for a music distributor that cares about educating their artists so they can get in a better position, you should check out Two Loss because every single Monday, they have office hours where they bring on dope people in the industry to hop on calls, give artists insights on the future of the music industry and answer some of the questions they have going on in their personal careers. So if you aren't a user of Two Loss or just want to have a little bit more information about them, go to Two Loss on Instagram. That's T-O-O-L-O-S-T, Two Lost on Instagram, and it'll take you to everything you need to see, inform you about the sessions and more. Back to this episode. Now we gotta ask y'all a question. Uh oh. Would you take me or the audience? Corey. Okay. You know, the, let the audience <laughs> hear what you think, man. Would you take a hundred thousand dollars advance or three years of free unlimited promotion and marketing on your favorite platforms? Which one would you take? I am taking the free unlimited promotion and marketing. A couple of reasons. One, I have a couple of different favorite platforms, at least three. You know what I'm saying? So that already makes the, the the advance not worth it because I feel like I would probably end up spending the advance money on marketing anyway, mm, you know? Yeah. Like marketing is typically for most artists one of the most expensive costs of the business. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I can immediately wipe away one of my most expensive costs. Yeah, yeah. Like fuck that advance. <laughs> <laughs> so here's where I go with it. There's a couple ways that this is like obviously take three years of marketing. So I'm going to make it a little bit harder. Because okay. Hustle Man, the rapper, says some people need that 100 k though, to feed the family. Ah, ah, family. I need y'all to buy into the vision, right? Uh, it, so we're going to have to eat some other way. But this is not 100 k This is 100 k advance. Oh, yeah, you're giving that back? Yeah. So, like, 
let's take advance out of the whole conversation. Okay. Because that makes it obviously wrong. It's like, I got to pay this money back and it's finite. <laughs> nah. And then, you know, when we were talking, I was like, oh, yeah, a free unlimited mark promotion and marketing on your favorite platforms. Not only am I like going to market myself unlimited, I'm also going to say, hey, Corey, you want some marketing? <laughs> hey, Coca Cola, you know what I mean? So you want some marketing? Like, I become a, a whole agency and I can offer it for the low because I get it unlimited. So, like, <laughs> my mind goes a billion different ways with it. <laughs> but I think it is a great exercise in getting people to understand like the value of promotion on these platforms and flipping it with dollar uh, and flipping it to real money because most of this game is testing right mm -hmm. like for you not to take an L on your testing like think about that in life for you not to have to suffer for your mistakes on this new thing at all yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. and you only get the upside <laughs> That's basically what this comes down to. Unless you like do like a wild post that just <laughs> fucks up your bread. That's what I was saying. But, uh, that's what what I was saying on camera to you is I was like, bro, I had free marketing on these different platforms. I would just be trying shit like every week a new product. Like, oh I man, I read that Q tips are back in style. Let me let me try selling some Q tips with this marketing and see. You know what I'm saying? What happened? Because you know I seen another comment that said like, bro, you use the marketing right, you are gonna make the money. You know what I'm saying? You are gonna make the money, and I completely agree. You know. Um, cause at that point you're getting paid to like marketing for me is basically just paying to stay in the game. So it's like, I get to be kept in the game, mm. but basically free three years, but three years. What about this person? This person said, give me 50 K and a year and a half and a year in promo. Nah, I'm still taking the three. Give me three years. You yes. don't understand how fast Dude. that 50 K goes away. And I think most people don't understand like how little, 50k is in marketing, especially on these platforms. That could be, that could be gone in a month. But that, that's what I'm saying. Let's let's do the math on it, right? Like most artists, at least like TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. Yeah. So it's at least three. Um, like I was saying earlier, for majority of artists, marketing, um, and production in terms of recording and your content, these are typically your like three of your biggest expenses as an artist. So out the gate, I can you can, like I said, the free marketing you can wipe away one of your biggest expenses. But if we were to take that hundred k, because like I said, I feel like most people that take it gonna end up spending it on marketing anyway. Mm. So now we're talking about three platforms, hundred k. Let's do across the same time span of three years. That's basically what ten k a year divided by three platforms. You're talking about a three thousand dollar budget a year for for three different platforms. You know what I'm saying? If you have to spend the money on marketing anyway. Crazy, bro. It's not worth it, bro. That's the math I'm doing in my head. That's 100% not worth it's it. It's not even close to worth it, man. <laughs> this person said something interesting. He said, well, let me see. Snake Gang, I think that's how I say his name. Anybody saying 100K don't know the feeling of waking up in the same spot you were three years ago, trying to make your dream work with no promo. Yeah, that was deep. That shit was deep. Now, there is a dark it's side real. to that okay. that he just made me think about. You could get all of this unlimited free marketing just to learn that it's not going to work. And then you do kind of wish you took the 100K. It's the only dark side I can kind of see this. It's like, <laughs> you just are trash, you know what I'm saying? You somehow found this magical genie that just grants you this wish. And you know, you know, genies like giving people fucked up lessons, so that's some shit a genie would do anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I mean, so look, that just goes if you're not smart, man. Like, I, I feel like there's no way to lose out of that unlimited marketing. Yeah. Because, after you figure out it's not gonna work for you, it's like let me attach you to something else. Yeah, exactly. Somebody, yeah. like, like, <laughs> like there's no way unless you just are like completely delusional and don't pay attention to feedback that you should not figure your way out of this. Like what a hundred K is more than enough to pay for promo and drop multiple songs with videos to go with them. Here we go. Yep. Ring, ring, <laughs> ring. Don't know what you're talking about. 100K is more than enough to pay for promo and drop multiple songs with videos to go with. And he threw videos. What kind of videos? Yeah, the videos were, yeah. And, yeah. And, I'm, and I'm not saying that it's not enough to do that. But not for three years. Three years <laughs> in, co in, in comparison to what that free promo can get you for three years. Yeah. And, and this this is the issue that these are, see, these are the people that be having negative responses and stuff like that in our comments. People who just don't know what they're talking about. Promotion, if that's all... <laughs> Guap Dead 4000 an artist who's still a who's actually established to a certain level he said 100k base basically like that's all I need 
That's all I need. The promo is worth more than 100K, no cap. But I know I can flip that 100K to a million. Ah, the confidence. I love it. Let's, but no. Let me, we'll do like two last comments. I'm taking 100K promo. Ain't 100, no, I'm taking promo, 100K ain't nothing. But the cash promo is an investment. If you fire and believe in yourself, you are spending that 100K on promo. Free promo is easy. See, I, this is, I love this. Most of the world, most of the artists are educated to a point now where they get the value of that. Mm -hmm. I feel like the good work is being done, and, and we're a part of that <laughs> The gospel wave. is spreading. The gospel is spreading. People are realizing <laughs> that everything that isn't a dollar doesn't mean that you're not getting your worth because people would do something like that as well. Like, oh, no, I can't believe that you're not paying me 100, like 100K. I'm worth that kind of money. And you want to give me free promo instead? Like 50 cents, uh, homie, who didn't want to take points at first. And he was like, give me 30K. And then points end up being worth 1.5 million. It's like, oh, no, you're just trying to get work for free. It's like, no, bro. Understand the value mm -hmm. of these conversations and decisions you're making. So yeah, that's that's all. We want to put that out there it, to throw that bait. If y'all were happen to be on that 100K side of the conversation, hopefully it's been made painfully obvious. <laughs> That you got some some inner work, got to some do. growth to do, some growth to do <laughs> for sure. But this is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary. I'm Brand Man Sean, and I'm Corey, and we out. Peace. Appreciate you for watching. If you like content like this, you'll love seeing our music marketing strategies that we use as an agency to actually blow up artists to millions and even billions of streams that are available for free at NoLabelsNecessary.com. And the cool part about it that's going to really make you love it is. We don't have to be all entertaining and add all this fluff just to get some views that we do on YouTube. We get straight to the information. There's play by play in courses that give you a breakdown of every step that you should do to get success. And you have the ability to have communication with us. We get on live talks, a lot of cool things for members, and it's free just to hop in. So check it out right now at nolabelsnecessary.com.